Hello, Nietzsche Ninos. How are you this evening? This is the first time I am actually recording in the evening because I'm going on a trip tomorrow for work. So here I am. You might notice as you listen to the story, the window behind me, it might get darker and darker and darker. We'll see. Anyway, today's story is called Little Nels's Painting. And it's written by somebody called Diane Wolkstein, or perhaps Wolkstein. I'm not sure. And the person who drew the pictures in this book is called Mary Jane Begin. So, as always, first we will go and review some signs of some pictures that will show up in our story. So my computer is giving me a little bit of a delay. Here we go. I hope that you can see this picture. What kind of a little critter is this guy? That's right, he's a mouse. Mouse, that's how we sign mouse. Just take your pointer finger and bring it across your nose. Mouse, mouse. And remember I told you the name of the book is called Little Mouse's Painting. So we sign painting like this. This is of course our canvas or our paper and this is our paintbrush painting so little mouse's painting next we have a that's right it's a bear we sign bear like this bear 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 so so far we have mouse and bear mouse and bear those are two animals so far there's another one. This guy is called what? A squirrel. That's right. We sign squirrel like this. Take your pointer finger and your middle finger and kind of bend them like this. And then it's just like the teeth of the squirrel because in order to be able to eat hard nuts and things like that, you have to have sharp little teeth. Can you do that? So that's three animals so far. We have mouse, we have bear, and we have squirrel. Okay. <gasps> what about this guy? He is a porcupine, and it is one of my favorite sides ever. I love it. So you put one hand like this in a fist, and again, remember where you're actually signing it is closer to your chest, between your waist and your chest, but I have to lift up my hands in order for you to be able to see me, okay? Unless I were to stand up or something. Maybe I'll try that one day. But I'm gonna stay right where I am for now, and we're gonna sign it like this. So you make a fist with one hand, and then tuck this thumb away, and then you kind of go like this. Can you see what that looks like? It's like the quills on the porcupine. Some people will sign it with their thumb sticking out or like this. Porcupine. So I think, I think that makes four animals so far. Mouse, bear, squirrel, and porcupine. I think that's it for our animals. So what are these delicious, delicious, delicious fruits? What are they? We see a lot of these in the summertime. I see red ones and blue ones and black ones. That's right. They're raspberries and strawberries and blackberries and blueberries. There's a few different ways to sign and there's some differences between it but we can generally sign it either like this because they're little this is like a little berry that you're picking off the plant or like this so you put your 
thumb and your pointer together and it's like picking up something little and putting it in your mouth. Berries or berries, berries or berries. There are ways to distinguish between these, but we're not going to get into that for our story. We'll just sign berries or berries. Okay. What about these? Squirrels. Love these. They're nuts. Nuts. So just like you have a thumbs up, you pretend that that thumb is kind of going under your top teeth. Nuts. Nuts. And one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, if you actually know Miss Sally, then you know I love tea. So we sign tea like this. This is like our cup, and this is the tea bag. Although in this picture, they might not be using a tea bag. And certainly I use something called loose tea most of the time. But there is tea that comes in a bag with a little string on it that you would put in the cup, let it steep. That might be a new word for you. And then you would pull the tea out. So we sign it like this, tea, tea. Tea. Okay, and crackers. Some people like to have crackers with their tea. So we sign crackers by knocking on our elbow. I have no idea why that is the sign for it, but that's how we sign it. Tea and crackers. And I think that's it, but we can go back and do a quick, quick review today. So we have mouse, mouse. All right. What is it? How do we sign painting? Painting, painting. What about bear? Bear, bear. How about squirrel? Squirrel, squirrel, porcupine. Miss Sally's favorite animal sign, porcupine, porcupine. Berries, berries or berries, berries or berries. Nuts. Nuts. Tea. Do you remember how to do tea? Tea. Tea. When I'm done with this story, I might go have some ginger tea. I like ginger tea in the evening with a little bit of honey. And crackers. Okay, so now we're going to get to the story. To the story. So again, it is called Little Mouse's Painting. Here we go, Little Mouse's Painting. And there's a little song here to start, but I didn't practice that beforehand, and Miss Sally's not a very good singer. I am a good signer, but not a good singer. Those words sound the same and are almost spelled exactly the same. So we'll skip that. But here's our first picture. Little Mouse lived in her pretty house under the earth. She had a sweet smelling bed made of pine wood and honeysuckle vines, a small braided rug, and a painting by her grandmother that hung on the wall over her cupboard. Last week we learned the sign for grandmother. Every day Little Mouse ate her breakfast of berries and nuts, made her bed, and went up the steps to visit her friends. I'm sorry, my picture's not looking very clear today. Sorry about that. Mountain living is sometimes tough. Some days, Little Mouse was invited to Squirrel's treehouse and had tea and crackers and flowers. Squirrel loved flowers. Sometimes he arranged them carefully in acorn cups, and sometimes he ate them. Oh, 
other days, Little Mouse went for long walks with Porcupine. Porcupine never walked in a straight line, but wandered from one side of the path to the other and back again. She'd often stop to look at something closely and say, Oh, look at that stone. Just look at that stone. Or, look at that cloud. Just look at that cloud. Then Little Mouse would also pause and examine the stone or quietly stare at the cloud. But one evening, even though she liked to see her friends, Little Mouse decided she would do something all by herself. She decided she would make a painting. The next morning, Little Mouse set up her grandmother's easel near a blueberry bush and began to paint. The sun shone down on her. She made long, thin strokes. She made short, thick strokes. She painted all morning, singing as she worked, and only stopped from time to time for a snack of berries. By afternoon, her painting was finished. As she was looking at it, she heard thump, thump, thump. It was bare. Little Mouse hid behind the tree. Ho, ho, cried Bear. That's a beautiful painting. A bear must have made that painting. No, cried Little Mouse coming out from behind the tree. I did. You? asked Bear, surprised. Yes, me. Well, I like the bear in the middle of the painting. It's not a bear. It's a blueberry bush. It's a bear. It's a blueberry bush. Where? cried Squirrel from his tree. Squirrel looked from bear to the painting and said, what bear? What berry? That's a squirrel. Where? What squirrel? cried bear and little mouse together. Squirrel pointed to the bottom of the painting. No, said little mouse shaking her head. That's a daisy. A daisy? That's a squirrel. It's a daisy. Stop, shouted Bear. Let's go see Porcupine. She's sure to know. Bear thumped along carrying the easel. Squirrel raced ahead with paintbrushes and Little Mouse went the slowest for she was holding the painting. When they arrived at Porcupine's house, Bear called, Porcupine, please come out. We have something important to show you. Porcupine came out of her house and saw a bear, squirrel, and little mouse staring at a painting. 
which they had placed under an elm tree. She stared too. Then she said, look, look at the porcupine. Just look at that porcupine. What porcupine? Where? cried Squirrel, Bear, and Little Mouse together. There, porcupine said, pointing to the top of the painting. No, no, the others shouted. That's a bear! That's a squirrel! No, no, Little Mouse cried, but no one paid any attention to her. So she said to the elm tree, perhaps you would like to know what I think. Yes, good, then I'll tell you. The sun is at the top, the blueberry bush is in the middle, and the daisy with the leaf is at the bottom. I know. How do I know? I know because I painted it. Well now, said Porcupine, I think I'll take a closer look. Porcupine went up very close to the painting. Look, she cried. Look at that. Squirrel went up very close to the painting. A flower and a leaf. How yummy, he said. Then Bear went up to the painting. Ho, ho, he shouted. The blueberry bush. I see the blueberry bush. From close up, I can see the blueberry bush. And I can see the sun's rays, cried Porcupine. Do you know, I think the blueberry bush looks a lot like you, Bear. Hmm, sighed Bear, quite pleased. It's a beautiful painting, said Squirrel. Leave it here for us to look at, said Porcupine. getting darker, just like it is here as I do the story. Do you see how it's getting darker and darker? Little Mouse left her painting on the easel all day, but when the stars came out, she rolled it up, picked up her grandmother's easel, and carried the painting in the easel and the paintbrushes to her house. Little House hung the painting. On the wall opposite her bed. She sat on her bed and looked at the painting. She walked around her room and looked at it from many different places and perspectives. She sat on her rug. She jumped up onto her cupboard. She sat on her bed again. Then she said, Bear is right. When I sit on my bed far away from the painting, the blueberry bush looks like bear. But when I am very close to the painting, the blueberry bush looks just like the blueberry bush. Little Mouse ate her supper of berries and nuts. Berries and nuts. She drank a glass of water and tucked herself into bed. From her bed, she looked at her painting of bear, squirrel, and porcupine. Then she closed her eyes, smiled happily, and said, good night, squirrel. Good night, porcupine. Good night, bear. Good night, my friends. I'm glad you're all in my painting. And Little Mouse fell fast. I'll be doing that soon after I have my tea. 
And I'm done telling you this wonderful story. Soon she began to dream. And in her dream, she saw clouds and trees and stones, all of which looked like little bear, squirrel, porcupine, and little mouse. The end. Do you know what I like about this story? besides all of the wonderful animals. I like that they each have their own perspective on things. Have you heard that word before? It's kind of a big, long, fancy word. Perspective. Perspective. That's the way we look at things, or consider things, or feel about things. And each of the animals related to Little Mouse's painting in this story have a different perspective of what they see in the painting. And do you know what? That's okay, because we're all allowed to have our own perspectives and our own beliefs on things. It's what, the, what makes the world interesting and makes the world go round. So I hope you liked this story, and I hope you too have sweet dreams just like Little Mouse in our story. I look forward to seeing you again next week with another wonderful book. Until then, have a great, great time, Nietzsche Niños. Adios.